Nick Birdie joining us right here on Cubs Live. Nick, thanks so much for taking time out prior to first pitch. And first things first, what does it mean to you being a Chicagoland native to be a Chicago Cub? I think it's exciting. I think it's one of those things that you grow up watching, uh, whether it's the Bears, Cubs, White Sox, whoever it might be downtown. But, uh, yeah, I think this is the dream. And for someone like myself who got to watch them on WGN every day um, and now to put on the jersey, it means a lot to myself, to my family, and uh, to a lot of people who have been on this road with me. Well, first of all, congratulations on getting the call up. But I have a question for you. So. I was in Iowa last, uh, last week doing the broadcast, and I heard that you had told Alex Cohen uh, that being a backup quarterback would be the best job in the world. My question to you is, you throw 98 to 100. I would think that being the Cubs closer would be the best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's the best job during the spring. I think once fall rolls around and October is done, uh, backup quarterback's the best job in the world. <laughs> I think there's still a little part of me that wishes uh, I was putting on a uniform every uh, Sunday. Hey, Nick, it's Sean Marshall. I played catch with you back in the day, and I wanted nothing to do with your yeah. fastball. I don't remember that years ago, but my hand still hurts from 100%. that moment. But yeah. Hey, what kind of <laughs> appealed to you about playing for the local team? I know you grew up a Cubs fan, but... I mean, in the offseason, coming in the offseason, what would you think about signing with the Cubs, man? Well, I think that's the crazy part is uh, I had surgery last April, uh, got released by the Padres, and then re-signed back a deal with them, uh, rehabbed the whole year. Um, so I wasn't planning on coming to Chicago, and I'm just rehabbing in December, getting ready to throw, and my agent calls me and kind of lets me know that there's some rumors going around that the Cubs might take me in the Rule 5 draft, and sure enough, you know, a few hours later it happened, and uh, I never expected to be wearing a Chicago jersey, but uh, I couldn't be more grateful to put on the Cubby blue and um, be out here representing the city that I grew up in. Yeah, very nice. And comparing organizations from the Pittsburgh Pirates to the Chicago Cubs, what have they done different for you uh, in spring training to kind of get your repertoire back up to speed? Yeah, you know, I think uh, being here with Chicago, we've seen that um, they're kind of taking this analytics and player development to that next level. And I don't want to knock the Pirates because I think they're getting to that point as well. Um, I just don't think we were there when, when I was in Pittsburgh. But I think a lot of these clubs are doing a really good job. But we're seeing it here in Chicago that um, they're developing the homegrown guys and going out and getting some players in free agency. Um, and having a mix of both of those puts a really good team together. Uh, my next question is, you know, I know you've only been here for a couple days, but um, being able to talk with maybe Gomes a little bit or Barnhart or kind of pick their brains, you know, they know how to call a game. Have you had any conversations with them on how to approach certain guys or maybe like told them your repertoire or what you like to do yet? Yeah, we've gone over that stuff um, in the pitchers meetings, but both of those guys are veterans. You know, these guys know the hitters better than I do. And um, when those guys put the, the pitch down, you know, we're most for the for the most part, we're on the same page. Um, but, you know, I like to follow those guys' lead. They put their work in. They know these hitters. They know our strengths. So I like to go about my business that way. Um, and I think that's what baseball is about is trusting the guy 60 feet away from you. And, you know, if they put it in play, you give those guys behind you a chance to make a good play. Nick, now when it comes to the analytics, we know the Cubs, they have the pitch lab down there in Mesa. So they're, they're really at the forefront when it comes to all that technology. But uh, when a catcher's down there, or back behind home plate, and he puts down one sign or the other, if, if there's one pitch that you have to go to, man, what's your favorite one and why? I don't know. I like to think I have two really good ones. I have my four seam and my sweeper right now. Um, I don't know. You know, I think uh, it's nice to always – rear back and go for that hundred but yeah. um, I think that sweeper's really taken off these last few weeks in Iowa so I'm excited to showcase that here. Okay hitting triple digits at Wrigley Field uh, something tells me the fans they will be on their feet when that moment rolls around but uh, we saw the tweet from you talked about how important your wife was took on uh, two side jobs and became a full-time mom but just let everybody know that's out there watching how important she is to you and your family at home. Yeah, I mean, she's everything. Uh, it's, it's hard to even get words out without getting emotional. Um, yeah, it means a lot. You know, she's, uh, she's a rock. So, yeah, I don't know what to say. I think you said enough right there. Hard to do it without her. Nick Birdie, yeah. glad to have you on the Cubs yeah. and can't wait to watch you get after it and make an impact with this team. I know there's a lot of people in Chicagoland that will be cheering for you, man. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah.